Evening, everybody. Oh, superb, lots of people on already. Is the sound okay? Can you uh, can you just let me know in the chat, guys? It's my my ritual check. So yeah, so uh, evening, Malcolm. Evening, Derek and Ludlow Fly Tying Clubs. Good to good to have you here. Um, Adam, all good. Thank you very much. Uh, Malcolm, spot on, Malcolm. Um, and Paddy, yep, great stuff. Great, great stuff. I hope everybody's um, well on this Friday evening. And that you're either thinking about getting out fishing soon or you're just like me, just waiting for those winds just to die down a little bit. I was out today on the water and um, it was just that little bit windy. Um, but it was fishable, but still windy. Uh, who else have we got? So we've got uh, Pete Flavin here, um, who I'm just going to call you Caroline all the time. You realise that, Pete. Uh, I've got Robert as well. Um, Rob, I've got a box of fly tying stuff here for you. Um, I'm down at me on Tuesday, so I'll bring it down with me. Um, um, so, uh, you know, you've got some extra stuff for your fly tying. Hi Phil. Yes, I was at me on springs today. I was doing a bit of tuition and a bit of uh, a bit of um, taster session for a young lad of eleven and his mum, and it was great to see a youngster and um, get into it. And he had a really nice cast as well by the end of it, um, um, but he did lose a little bit of interest after two and a half hours because um, the fish weren't really playing too much uh, uh, of uh, jump on my line today. Right then, folks, we're going to get started because, again, I want to maximise tying time tonight. I want to try and get through three patterns. Um, the three patterns that I've put up um, include the one that's in front of you at the moment, which is one of my favourites, which is the, the grey duster. But it's a variant of the grey duster. Um, and uh, um, the the second um, we're going to tie is uh, as a dry fly, reverse dry fly called the Leckford Professor. Um, more on that later. And then another favourite of mine, which is the Beacon Beige. Um, all flies, which I know catch fish, and they definitely catch fish on, on the rivers around by us here, um, but also really useful um, on, on a still water. If the, if the fish are rising, particularly the Leckford Professor, um, and they're, 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 they're a bit wary because it's a reverse tie, um, sometimes it can outfox those wily fish. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to tie these today on a size 12 hook. Um, these are a partridge size 12. doesn't matter if it's up eye, down eye um, for these. Um, but I'm going to tie on a 12 so we can see exactly what's happening most of the time. Just going to give it a little bit of a, a, little bit of a twang. Um, I'm going to use some um, Semperfly Nano Silk in white. Um, because it, it fits with the body colour. So most of the time with your flies, fit your... Um, if you're wondering what colour, unless the pattern, for instance, like a imperial, talks about it being purple, try and match the colour of your thread to whatever the body is um, of the of the fly. So um, I'm going to start off close to the eye, and I'm going to bring my thread up, and I'm going to leave about two mil. That's where my head is going to be formed, and I'm just going to tie this down and form. A nice flat underbody. Now the great thing about nano silk is that it sits really flat. It's also uber strong. Now I'm going to take it down so it's in line with the the point of the hook. I'm not going to bring it all the way back this time um, because I want this bare hook here to be able to put my tail directly onto that. And I'm just going to get rid of that. Now traditionally the grey duster does not have a tail. Um, it's tailless, it's just a body and a hackle. Um, I quite like tying them with a tail though. Just think it, um, it, 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 it just adds something 
um, when it sits in the water and with the availability these days of um, of Coq de Leon feathers and this is some medium pardo um, Coq de Leon you know which which are very rigid and allow the fly to sit in the surface film you can't go wrong so you can already see I've used quite a lot off this side here um, and I'm going to be I'm going to be coming up I'm not going to waste any of it um, and I, I don't want much I want about four or five barbules so four or five doesn't you can count them if you like so I've got what have I got there I've got six there um, so I'm just going to lose one there we go and I'm going to pull them out so that they are 90 degrees to the stem so that they all the points are matching up here I'm going to grip them and just give it a pull now I'm looking for the length of my tail to be the length of the of the body and a little bit extra because as I've said before I do like a long tail on a dry fly um, if you look at the the tails on the actual insects themselves um, they're they're just long they're just very very long so why not mimic it with a long tail so I'm going to bring it in just going to measure it up hold it in my left hand and place it on the side of the hook and then just roll my tie-in thread up so it pulls the Coq de Leon up onto the top of the hook and it'll sit nicely on the top of the hook. And I'm just going to give it a couple of turns to lock it down. There we go. And then I'm just going to lift it and I'm just going to gently just bring my thread under and just cock the tail up. And then put a few more turns in. And just come in and have a look. I'm happy with that. And then I'm just going to come in and with a 45 degree angle, I'm just going to trim off the tip. And you can already see that the nano silk is not making much of an underbody at all. The underbody itself, I'm going to build up with the dubbing that we're going to use. Now, it just so happens that um, I'm going to use uh, some Vicuna dubbing um, and you can see it says Mark's Duster. Now Dave at Vicuna, I rang him up and I said, right, I want a grey duster mix, but I can't seem to get it. And he, he played around and he came up with a number of different mixes. And this was the one that I favoured out of them all. So it's it's from Vicuna um, and it's a one. It was a one off. But any grey dubbing, muskrat, something like that. And I'm just going to pull out a little bit. Um, I don't want a massive amount. There it is on my finger. Okay, and I'm just going to apply it lightly to my thread. I'm just going to roll it around so that it it felts onto it. Remember, it's not sticking to the the actual thread. You you you're making felt, you know, for want of a better term. And I'm just going to just going to form my little dubbing noodle. Move it up or my dubbing noodle. Now I'm looking for a cigar shape here. Um, so it's going to be narrow at the tail end. So I'm going to put a couple of turns just at the tail. One, two, three. And then I'm going to gradually work my way up. And every now and then just stop, tighten my dubbing loop, my dubbing noodle. And take it up, tighten it up. And I'm going to bring it so that I've got, just by here, um, I've got about half of the body length left. Because I want quite a substantial hackle on this. Um, so I want it to sit quite nicely in the surface film. So, and then I'm going to go back on myself about halfway along my body. And then I'm going to finish it off by coming all the way back up. And I get this, I get this sort of almost um, cigar shape here now we've got some extra little bits just sticking out here it's not a problem I'm just going to nip those out but they do make for good legs just going to nip those out and then just draw everything back with my fingers and just tidy up at this end here now i've said before in these sessions that concentrate on technique because the techniques are what drives a pattern. 
So if the technique is there and if you've practiced the technique, you're going to be able to tie most flies. And in this case, the grey duster changed the body colour, changed the tail colour, changed the hackle colour, and you've got a completely different fly. Um, you stick a little rib in it, gold rib, green body, um, no tail, and a, a Greenwell's hackle, and you've got a Greenwell's glory dry, dry fly. So, you know, straight away, you know, there isn't, you know, it's just about varying. Now, I'm going to use, just leaning over behind me, I'm going to use for the hackle, I'm going to use this, um, this light blue um, um, done uh, Mets um, cape, and I'm going to look for an appropriate size feather for a size 12. That's a little bit long, so I'm just going to come back in and find a slightly narrow one and just nip that out. And I've got this lovely, lovely feather here with these mottled sections in it for the blue and it just gives some variation in it. Now I like this particular fly, the grey duster, in small sizes, um, particularly if there's a canis hatch on, um, you know, it can be very much the fly that the fish will switch on to. Um, so I'm going to start by pulling the bottom end of the barb barb barbules um, out at 90 degrees and then I'm just going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to cut those off so I'm left with comb effect now I want the the good side facing away from me and I'm going to come in and I'm going to lock the hackle in place then I'm going to work my my thread up through the comb effect so that so that it gives it extra um, stability and can lock it in and then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to find there we go just going to find the the tip of that stem and just nip that out there we go and then tidy that and go over it and make a nice bed of thread because it's nano silk it's not going to build up and be really 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 chunky and then we're going to put it at the end like that towards the eye now i'm going to put a little whip finish in at the end or a half hitch if you prefer just to stop it from um ever um just being knocked um as i as I wrap my hackle, I'm just going to put it in my bobbin cradle. Ooh, there we go, in my bobbin cradle. And I'm going to bring it in, and there's my hackle. And I'm just going to position the hackle so it's going in the right direction. So I want the, the good side facing in and the, the duller side facing out. And I'm going to put two turns at the back. And you can already see that the, the hackle fibers are nice and stiff. They're not. Uh, soft they're not collapsing in on each other so that's two that's three turns and I'm just going to work my way touching turns out towards out towards the eye trying not to trap in any pieces and if I if I just need to just put my finger on the top trap it down finger on the top trap it down I'm going to bring it forward like this. So it's about six turns. I'm going to put a seventh in just here because I've got more than enough room. And I can come in with my thread. Just tighten up. Come in with my thread. And tie down that feather. So don't worry if you get the odd barbule just sticking forward. We can deal with that in a minute because what we can do is we just come in with a pair of scissors and very carefully just nip that section out. And straight away we've got our nice hackle in place. I'm just going to sweep that back very gently and now I'm going to build up a head. 
and the nano silk because it's so fine you've got to use a reasonable amount to build up a head but it also gives you a minute head and it gives it that gray color because it's a white thread there you go and it doesn't trap in and push back all of the hackle okay and then what we're going to do is going to come in and one two three and finish and just to secure it we'll do one two three more there we go. better to do three and three than do six six um, in one go um, because you've got the added um, aspect of having that extra um, knot that you've tied off scalpel because it's nano silk don't want to dull, dull my scissors and I'm just going to push it against the nano silk and there we go and we end we have there our gray duster now you can do a number of things with this now and um, you can put a little bit of uh, varnish just on the head if you like I tend not to um, you can trim away this bottom section here so it sits in the surface film um, and what you can also do is if you turn it upside down so turn it upside down and then take a lighter and just lightly just singe those barbules down at the bottom and you end up with quite a uh, a nice um, little um, effect where uh, the the tips of the barbules have been almost melted and they form little balls and they sit just in the surface more like the feet um, of the insect itself um, the great thing about this vicuna mix is that it all it straight away gives you lots of um, tufts of material coming out that adds to its whole buggy look um, can guarantee it'll catch fish okay can guarantee you can go up to size tens but try it in smaller sizes particularly if you're targeting um, grayling on the dry fly they do like this um, the grayling on the dry fly on the gray duster okay so <coughs> Uh, let's have a quick look. Um, so, um, so I just picked up Paddy's question: Why the cigar shape? Um, it's building up the cigar shape on it. Paddy is more of just the mimic of the body shape of the insect. They, they're often slimmer at the base, and then they get wider towards the thorax area. So it's just trying to to add that um, little bit of stimulus um, for what are already pretty wary fish. Because if it if it looks completely out of place, they're less likely to take it. Um, okay. Um, oh, morning, Malcolm. Uh, morning, Malcolm. It feels like morning. Hi, Malcolm. It's nice to have you here. Um, so, yeah, Phil. Yeah, I did say that, um, that traditionally the grey duster is tied without a tail. Um, I tie it with a tail because I just like it. I just like putting a tail on it. Um, and uh, I just think it, it cocks and sits in the surface film, particularly on, on the beats, on the itching um, that we that we fish. Um, OK, so and it's a, um, you know, as a dry fly and as a fly, the grey duster change the colours. You've got, you know, you've got an olive there. If you put if you don't olives, you know, straight away. You know, if you wanted to put little, uh, you could put wings in it if you wanted to try your slip wing effect um, uh, and, um, you know, you know, just change up the colours and you can mimic all sorts of sorts of insects. OK, you could um, you could put a thorax across the top, push these down and then trim the bottom and you've got almost a spinner type pattern. So you can do a lot of different things with it. OK. Uh, right. OK, so. Um, Let's move on and let's move on to to a pattern that you may or may not be familiar with. So this is the the Leckford professor um, and I'm I'm you probably worked out by now. I, I, I like tying sort of quite traditional patterns with a twist, but this is one particular pattern that I came across a couple of seasons ago because somebody suggested that I fish it um uh, on the on the itching and i had a go with it and it actually um it actually outfished 
um, the other dry flies that we were trying to fish on the day, even even the humble cling camera, it outfished the, the cling camera on that day. I'm not going to say that it's going to outfish the cling camera all the time, but it did on that day. Um, and it's a reverse tie, but nothing that should make anybody go, oh, I'm not going to be able to tie that. It's the same processes, the same principles that run all the way through it. OK, so we're going to we're going to start off. Um, and again, I'm going to leave a couple of millimeters towards the eye for my head. And this time I am using the Semperfly Classic uh, 12 or waxed brown thread. And I'm going to bring my thread touching turns to get that nice underbody so I can get some grip. And I'm going to bring it so that it would be in line with where a barb might be on this particular hook. We can get rid of my my tag end. Let's bring it down. There we go. Now, this particular fly has got two hackles, two colours. And we start off with this particular one um, with a cream hackle at the front. A visual prompt. OK, um, and I'm going to come down and this is a size 12 again. So I've got to find an appropriate sized feather, which tend to be down this bottom end of the cape here. So we get up to tens um, uh, towards this top end. If you ever wondered about these ones here, they're great for um, for putting on the sides of, uh, of sort of um, uh, uh, bass patterns and things like that. So you can use these, um, but I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna find an appropriate length feather. There we go. You can use a hackle gauge. I'm just gonna do it by eye today. Um, and you can see as a genetic hackle, um, it is it is still tapered. OK, this is a this is a neck. OK, um, I, I don't want these really long bits down here. And it might seem a waste, but I'm just going to nip those off. I can probably get two flies out of that that one feather. So it's not too much of a waste. So I'm going to go back and form my my comb at the end so that it doesn't slip. And just trim those down. And I'm going to put, I'm going to tie that in with the good side facing away from me. There we go. And I'm just going to trap that down. A couple of turns, trap it down, make sure I'm happy with its positioning. Yep. And I'm just going to come all the way down and just tie that in. I'm not even going to cut it off because it can actually help form. The taper of the body okay so there we go okay now for this this one here um, i am going to come back in so that for this particular hackle i'm going to come in and i'm going to put in a whip finish so that i can just put my thread in the cradle um, and i'm going to come in i'm going to take my hackle pliers bring it in there we go and I'm gonna put one two turns at the base and then I'm gonna put a second I'm gonna work my way backwards just give it a little shimmy so that you don't trap too many barbules you're gonna trap some put three in and then I'm going to put a fourth to there. Okay, so it's enough of a of a signature. It's enough of a signature hackle to 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 have an effect and be a trigger at the base of the fly. So I'm just going to ooh, just going to tie that down like that. I'm going to come in. And nip it off like so just bring everything forward and if you've got a rogue barbule just trim it off like that it's all going to get hidden so we've got our our front hackle at the reverse end of the dry fly now the whole point of this is that when it presents it will it should sit cocked up like this um, with the eye facing up 
with the tippet here, which would be mimicking a tail. So, uh, so ultimately, the fish is seeing this bit as the as the front, um, rather than it traditionally seeing seeing this bit as the as the back. Um, and we've got that in place. Now, I'm going to come in, um, and now I'm going to use a brown um, cock hackle, okay, similar size, um, and I'm going to go through the same process. So I'm just going to trim off. On either side, like so. Trim off either side, and I'm going to bring it in, and I'm going to trap it down, and then just slide my fingers forward, and then trap the whole thing, the whole thing down. And again, I'm going to put a little whip finish in just to get it out of the way. Now, you might be very tempted as well to to dispose of, the, when you get to that point of a, of a hackle and you've only got a little tip left that maybe is, isn't is enough to put on the a fly that you're gonna be tying, don't throw them away. They make great wings on daddies and things like that. So, so put them in a little container and keep hold of them. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same with, that I did with the white hackle. Um, and I'm going to put bring bring it round. I'm going to put one, two turns just behind the white, and then three. Give it a little shimmy. Four and five, and then I'm going to come in. And lock that down. On the upstroke. Helps if I bring that up really. There we go. Just thinking a bit far ahead. And in it goes. Now obviously in smaller sizes you put a smaller number of turns in. But you'll have smaller feathers as well. Um, and if you, if you we'll look at the proportions in a second. I'm just going to trim off. There we go. We'll look at the proportions in a second. But if you look, it's about I've now got, hackled a third, about a third of the uh, of the fly there. And I've over hackled. I'm over hackling this one because I really do want it to just to 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 cock up right. Um, and I'm just going to tidy this up and then come all the way down. Now we're going to put a rib into this. Um, and I'm going to use some uh, Lurex flat gold tinsel. Um, I bought this when I was about 13, which was a long time ago now, in Cardiff Market, um, in the haberdashers in Cardiff Market. Um, I'm just hoping that this is going to focus area. In the haberdashers in Cardiff Market. Um, and it was a gold mine for going to find materials. So, and, and it was significantly cheaper to buy a whole spool like this which has lasted me almost 30 years um, than it was to uh, to go to the fly shop and and buy a sort of a, a similar thing so you know be creative is what i say so i'm going to come in and we're going to tie this in as the rib and i'm going to bring There you go. I'm going to bring it all the way back so that I've tied that in, and then I'm just going to tidy up forward, and then come all the way back. There you go. Okay. So um, the body, or well, the body is, uh, is is down to you. Today I'm going to use some um, some Nature Spirit Snowshoe uh, Rabbit foot dubbing um, because I just really like it um, and I've got this beautiful pheasant tail colouring um, of, of it here um, it's like a nice brown to it and it's got a little hint of uh, of, um, of, uh, of grey as well um, and a little bit hint of green in it too just want a little pinch it's really soft stuff you don't want to you don't want to put this on and have a really tight 
dubbing noodle because the, the nature of snowshoe hair is that it's got natural floatants in it um, and it oh I just I've got my piece of lurex that's just not playing ball here I'm going to put it in my clip there we go um, I'm just going to make a, a dubbing noodle and I'm going to slide it slide it into place and I want it wider at this end at the at the hackle end than at the eye end so I'm just going to put some turns in like that and I'm actually going to start to go back over myself to make it a bit thicker and then start to bring it down I'm forming that cigar shape again okay um, and a little bit more now this pattern was devised by a very well a relatively famous river keeper called Ernest Mott um, and he was a river keeper on the river test and he devised this pattern because he was constantly being told that um, the fish that his clients were fishing for they couldn't catch them so he devised this brand new pattern and it's one of those patterns that sort of goes by the wayside that people don't actually talk about um, but give it a go because it's a really lovely pattern to tie it's a different set of techniques but what it also does um, is is give you a different type of fly for your box and now i'm just going to put my rib in so i'm just going to i'm just going to form my rib gone out of focus a bit there Oh, you've gone out of focus. Just try and get that back in focus. There we go, back in focus. And I'm going to put my turns in. I want about three or four turns, four if I can get it, about a millimeter or so apart to form. I suppose what is almost a gold root hairs ear effect. I'm going to bring it back round to my fourth and ooh, just going to slide there and bring it up and then just tie that off. And there we go. And we're almost done. So I'm just going to just bring everything back. I've got a couple of little bits here just in my way just gonna nip those off and now I'm gonna form in that millimeter or two space I'm gonna start from the eye work my way backwards and I'm gonna form a nice tapered head like so and finish with a whip finish like so and then just come in push and there we have it now you can then come in with some light little brush strokes with a bit of velcro and just tease out some of the the dubbing so it's got plenty of longer hairs in it and if you've got any that are too long just come in and just give them a little little tweak out okay so it's a reversed hackled fly with two hackles um, and ultimately when it hits the water it's going to sit in the water like that because the hooks slightly heavier it's going to sit in the oh let's get out of focus there it's going to sit in the it's going to sit in the water like like so and the tippet will come out of here and that would give the image of the tail just out by here. And again, you can you can nip off these bottom sections to make it sit flatter if you wish um, or just give them a little singe. Um, and you've got another fly, another dry fly in your armory. Um, if you what you could also do. Um, is if you wanted to, you could have the white hackle at this end. Um, and then put your body in and then then tie in a traditional brown hackle at the other end and have it and have the hackle at either end 
Um, um, there's, a, there's a lot of flies that are tied like that. There's one that springs to mind. It's got two black hackles at either end um, and, uh, and um, like a, a red floss body and it's called the Diablo. Um, uh, uh, it's a Spanish pattern um, and that, that can be uber effective as well, particularly for grailing. Um, so, you know, another fly for us to try, which is well worth it. Okay. Uh, yeah, Phil, definitely. By visual was the other was the other one. Um, if you add a third hackle and you hackle it all the way along, um, you get the the, the trickle. Um, you know, so so straight away. Um, you know, it, it's about the technique, changing the technique up for the particular um, for the particular patterns and just changing the materials that you're using, and uh, and you'll be surprised at what you can get from it. Um, okay. Um, so Anton, how do you set? Right, I'll show you in a second, Anton. I may as well show you now, and hopefully I won't set fire to my fly. So um, here we go. I'm going to place the grey duster in the vise. There we go. I'm going to put the grey duster in the vise. I'm going to turn it upside down, like like so, um, and I'm going to take. My lighter, which is in the side here, I'm going to put it on its lowest setting. OK, um, and I'm literally going to get the flame. There it is without burning my fingers. Got the flame and I'm literally just going to waft it over the top. Um, it, I just blew it out then. Um, I just want the heat to affect it. I don't really want to set fire to it like that so what we end up with um, is I hope you can see that you can just see we've got stubby little bits here if I just do that it gets rid of any excess stuff um, and you can just do that little side bit there just like so there we go so when that sits in the water, okay, we've got these little stubby bits here. It's a, it's far more effective than cutting them. Um, and I'd say give it a go. Do not put it this way up and then set fire to it from below because the whole thing will just go up. Okay, um, too many people have done that. Um, uh, so Phil, do I use that to light your Cuban cigars? No, I keep my um, my my vintage Zippo for that. I'm afraid, um, young Philip. Okay, um, I hope that answers your question there, Anton. Um, and it's just worth giving it a go. It's really effective because when that fly now sits in the water, it's going to fit sit that much lower. And sometimes, if the fish are just sipping, just slightly subsurface, and um, it could make a significant difference. Um, to to taking a fish or not. Okay, let's put that in there. Right, so on to our third pattern, which is again one of my favourites, um, the Beacon Beige. Again, it's a double hackled fly, um, size twelve again. Um, and for this, we're going to use the the brown Semper fly, twelve or thread. Um, I'm going to leave a couple of millimeters again. I can't stress enough about leaving that space because um, otherwise you're going to start chasing the head and, and, and it's going to end up coming over the eye. You're going to not have enough room to do anything with it. Um, so leaving that space is absolutely vital. It gives you a visual aid um, to where you need to stop without going any further. Um, um, OK. So. I'm going to bring my thread again towards the base. And again, I'm not going to take it all the way down because I would like my tail to sit on the um, uh, on the bare hook. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'm going to go back to my Cock de Leon again uh, here. OK, normally you would use um, uh, brown cock fibres. Um, I just like Cock de Leon. Um, if you got it, why not use it? It's nice and stiff. Um, it doesn't go all wavy and it doesn't collapse all the time. 
Um, you know, so if you've got it, you can get hold of some feathers. Why not use it for a tail? I want this particular tail to be a little bit bushier than the grey duster. So I'm going to take about eight to ten fibres. There we go. I pulled them out so that they are all points facing together. I'm just going to give them a little roll in my fingers just so that they all sit together. And again, I like a long tail. Okay, you can have a short tail, it's the length of the body. I just like to have length of the body plus a little bit. Um, I just think it looks good, it presents better. Um, there's no evidence that the fish prefer it, but um, I just like it. And I do tie for myself as well as for the fish. I see a lot of people saying, yeah, I tie for I tie for the fish. Well, yeah, so do I. But I've got to like it. I've got to like what I'm doing. Um, and I've got to have confidence in what I'm fishing with. So there we go. It's just sat on the top of the top of the hook. OK, and I'm just going to lift the tail. I'm just going to bring my thread underneath it and just bring it under. It's just going to cock it up and just splay it out. Right up. I'm just going to very carefully just track down the cock to the on as I move down until I get to about halfway. Now I'm not rushing this bit because it's vitally important that we get an even underbody on this fly. 45 degrees. And I'm gonna I'm only gonna go up two thirds. I'm gonna leave at the top th the, the front third for my hackle or hackles. And then I'm going to bring it back, trying to keep it as much close to touching turns as I can. Try not to go over previous turns. And then bring it all the way back. Now the body for this particular um, fly, we're going to use um, we're going to use some peacock. We're going to use peacock quill. Now this is a um, this is a peacock eye that's been dyed um, brownie ginger. OK, um, and I've taken I've taken a couple of um, you can probably see there. Oh, I don't know if you can see there. I've taken a couple of strands close to the eye. OK, these are these are some of the better um, segmented and and structured parts of the uh, of the of the peacock eye and the peacock feather. Um, what I've done is I've taken them and I have sat and I've stripped off the barbules. And to do that, I've literally placed them on a. On a cutting mat in front of me and I've used my trusty uh, Windsor and Newton Griffin eraser um, that I use as well for, um, for for when I'm doing watercolors and things for the, when I've got pencil on there and um, it's quite a hard rubber okay and I literally just hold them down with my finger and I just run the run the rubber down it in one direction towards the base of the of the barbule um, and um, and I keep doing that and it comes off. It takes about 30 seconds to strip one. OK, so, you know, you can buy Polish quills and things like that. Absolutely great. But sometimes if you've got plenty of peacock feathers, strip your own. That's what I say. Um, and you can see that at, at the base end, it's very thick. I don't know if you can see that. Where are we? There we go. Base end, it's very thick. And then it thins out towards the tip. OK, so I'm going to come in. I'm going to get rid of this very fine tip end here. There we go. Now, these could be brittle. So one of the things I like to do is I will, after I have um, uh, stripped them, um, I drop them into an egg cup full of warm water and I leave them in there and it softens them up. Um, if I'm tying a lot of these, you'll find I've got them in my between my... Um, between my lips and my mouth and I soften them up with the heat of uh, heat of my mouth and it just makes it easy and they don't crack then when you uh, when you um, when you uh, put your wraps in so I'm going to come in okay and I'm going to take my thread to halfway and I'm going to place my quill here I'm going to place it lift up the thread like that bring it round to the other side draw it back on itself and tie down back to the base like that and then i'm going to take my thread keep it as flat as i can so i'm just going to give it a little spin as flat as i can 
to my trigger point of where I'm going to put my hackle in. So I've got my um, got my uh, my strip quill in place. Now it's always good with the strip quill to use hackle pliers, um, so because it is quite slippery. So I'm just going to put attach my hackle pliers to the tip. Like that. And now I'm not going to do absolute touch in turns because we've got a brown underbody. I can actually leave a tiny amount of space between each turn and it adds to the segmentation. Now, if you used a different colored underbody, a lighter tan, you get a much you get a different effect, much a much more segmented effect. Um, so I'm just going to bring it round. Notice that I'm keeping it tight but I'm not pulling it this is all about pressure I'm just going to build up along here I'm going to build up the segmentation all the way along like so a little bit further and then tie down now looking at it and i know i'm a lot closer than you i can see a nice segment segmentation appearing i'm just going to trim that off tidy at the end like so so i've got my body in play there now that's pretty fragile so you know I like a little bit of, uh, of, of resin to play around with. So I'm just going to take some of this Golf Thin Man um, resin. And I want a really, really fine um, amount layer on here. I do not want um, want it to be bit big and thick and bulbous. So that's why I'm going to use the Thin Man. I'm going to use some of the um, uh, foam tipped um, uh, uh, um adapters that we talked about last week and I'm just going to place a bit of resin just on the tip now the great thing about this because it's sort of like a spongy material is it starts to soak up the resin and then what you can do is you can then just apply a very very fine layer and if you find you've put too much on you just turn turn it over and you mop it up so literally we're just putting a layer of resin a very 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 fine layer of resin I just turned that so you can't see it but a very very fine layer of resin and what this is going to do is it's going to extenuate the um that wonderful segmentation but it's going to protect the body as well so that hopefully this fly will take a number of fish. Okay, so we've done that. And I'm going to come in with my Loon Infinity um, uh, UV torch, which I saw somewhere the other day it was on sale. It might have been at Serious Fishing um, in Ireland, um, but it was on sale and it was a good bargain. It was reduced from sort of like £60 to 35 I mean, it's a great torch, this one. Um, it works at the right wavelengths is absolutely fantastic now because we put a fine layer of resin on here we shouldn't get any tackiness at all often one of the issues with tackiness isn't necessarily about the curing it's about putting way too much on there and then not curing enough okay um, so let's put that on there and that's looking nice and lovely i'll take photos of them afterwards because you'll be able to see um, the, uh, the segmentation far better than I can show on here. So I'm just going to bring my thread back a little bit. So there we go. So the next stage is to put our um, is to put our hackles in. And for this, I'm going to use a, uh, a, a, a an old favourite, a grizzle hackle. So I'm just got to check that that's the right size. Yeah, that's about right. A grizzle hackle. And I need to come back to my trusty brown cape as well. I need a I need a slightly 
bigger feather for this than I've got currently got in front of me. So I'm just going to bring that out. No, it's too small. Take your time selecting them. There we go. That's it. That's the one I want. Put those to one side. And then come back in. Now, this, um, this has a, a double hackle on it. A bit like an Adams does. And I'm going to do exactly the same as I've done with all the other dry flies. I'm going to form that ladder at the tip to stop it slipping. And I'm going to turn it so that the good side is facing away from me. And then I'm just going to bring that in. I'm going to tie in my first hackle. And then I've got my my grizzle hackle and I'm going to do exactly the same form my comb and tie that in as well so I've got two hackles and I've got the ends of the stems here so I'm just going to come in with my scissors, just nip those out, like that, and then bring my tying thread down towards the eye. And just for my own peace of mind, I'm going to put, oh, I'm going to put a turn in, place it in my like that and I'm going to start off with the with the grizzle hackle I'm going to put not touching turns I'm going to leave a bit of space between them so to give it a little shimmy so I'm not trapping loads of barbules in it three four so I come to that point and trap it down and I've still got plenty of room towards the eye and I'm just going to nip out like that and then I'm going to do the same with the brown hackle but I'm going to put the brown hackle through the grizzle hackle and I'm going to try not to trap many hairs. So that's where the shimmy comes in, or many barbules. The shimmy comes in. I'm going to try and get it into the spaces that I'd left in between. You are going to trap them down, but the amount that you trap compared to the amount that you leave are going to be quite, quite, um, quite small. So don't worry too much about it. You can always come in with a needle afterwards and just pick them out and then bring it in. So three turns there. So we've we've doubled up the amount of hackle. I've just got a couple trapped where I don't want them. So I'm just going to bring my thread up, give it a shimmy, shimmy it through. I've got a couple that are facing forward, but I can deal with those in a second. And two, and I'm just going to tie that down. So two locking turns. Nip that off. And I'm just going to draw, draw the hackle back. Just so I've got access to that section where, that I left. And now I'm going to just tidy up that front with a nice tapered head. That traps everything down. It's got everything in play. And there we go. And oh, have got that stray rogue barbule there. I'm going to come in, one, two, three, and tie off, scalpel, push it against it, don't cut, just push, there we go, and we're going to take some um, Salia varnish, clear, and going to take a needle I'm just going to dip it in 
because I've got a little globule of it on my needle. There it is. Gives me fine control. I'm just going to dab it onto the top. Turn it around. Do the same on the bottom. Just move it all the way around. And the good thing about the cilia varnish is it will sink into the thread rather than um, uh, Sally Hansen um, and other varnishes. I keep losing focus tonight. I'm going to have to work on this one today. Didn't do that last week. I think he likes my t-shirt. Um, why is that doing that? I'm not too happy with my camera work tonight, guys. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay. So we got this, this lovely hackle. It's just sitting in there. Just draw all these in. If you've got any that are sticking out where you don't want them, towards the back, just trim them out. And you've got another one there that is slightly in the wrong place. Trim that out. But as you, as, as we all say, the fish don't care. And again, you can trim down the bottom. You can singe it. Um, you know, if you put in a couple of. Um, uh, you know, if, it, if you're going to turn it something like this into an Adams, we would have tied in um, a couple of a uh, couple of tips of a gris, grizzle tips in as the wings, just in about here, so sort of in in the middle of the hackle, just about there, and then hackled around it. So immediately you've got a you've got an alternative form of fly. If you want to turn it into sort of the the, the Catskill style, um, you you might use some some mallard. Um, uh, you know, mallard tufts or summer duck or things like that. So straight away, it's all about the technique. It's all about ensuring that you can, um, you can, you can tie, you can tie in, and and keep everything in the right proportions. And as soon as that happens, the world's your oyster. Choosing the right thread, choosing the right, um, the right hook for the the particular type of fly. Um, you know. Um, you know, is uh, is really, really, really important. So we've got three simple, or relatively simple dry flies, all with um, slightly different materials, slightly different ways of of presenting them for for different um, scenarios. Okay, um, and um, uh, and give them a go, give them a go, because uh, they they do catch fish. These absolutely catch fish. Um, the, the beacon beige I tied a couple of years ago for the three fly challenge at Meon Springs as the dry fly um, and, uh, and and that it took a lot of fish and people got lots of points for that. So um, so a lo lovely set of three flies um, that you can add to your box um, and as the season is going to be starting soon here on our rivers, uh, I can't wait. Um, OK, so um, let's have a look. Um, let's uh, let's drop up and have a look. Um, right, so if we go back to the singeing, so Malcolm's put um, a cauterizing tool. Yes, Malcolm, absolutely a cauterizing tool. Um, I've just, I've just never had one, um, and uh, um, I was thinking the other day that it'd be quite, quite an interesting tool to have. But knowing me, I'd probably burn my fingers off. Um, Paddy, do I leave that gap at the head for every fly? Um, the vast majority, if I'm, if I'm not using uh, a bead. Um, on a nymph or anything like that, I'll always leave that millimetre to two millimetres and sometimes even more. Try leaving more than you think you need um, because you can always fill it. What you can't do is unfill it once you've filled it and you've got to a particular point. Um, so, Tony, the three flies, what size do you tie those down to? Um, most of the time down to 18s. Um, I do do, sorry, I do tie the grey duster um down to a 20 or a 22 because uh, um uh, we get a, a quite a prolific canis hatch um and they they're really quite useful um so let's have a look yeah alan back when i was tying commercially i was asked if i tied to catch fish or fishermen um <laughs> to be honest when i'm tying to uh to to sell alan uh, you're absolutely right. You know, it's got to look good, doesn't it? Um, but 
what I will say about the, you know, I'm only tying flies to, uh, here that absolutely catch fish um, uh, at the same, but they also, like, they've also got to look good and I like them looking good. Um, uh, Phil, yes, I, I tend to use gold for resin uh, most of the time. Um, I do like it. I haven't used all the different types of resin, but it's one that has never failed me. So, uh, so I do like it. Um, so Derek, yeah, an artist double O brush. Absolutely. Um, to apply varnish. Um, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Ultimately, um, I've got I've got very, very small, tiny fingers. Um, so I, I, I'm really quite happy with it with a needle. And I've always got needles floating around on, on my table because um, I be, might be making detached bodies and things like that. Um, uh, yeah, Paddy, um, this, it is an issue with it. Um, it's to do with my T-shirt, actually. Um, it's a problem with it. Uh, but yeah, I'm, it's something I've got to work on on that. Um, Anton, marvellous double hacker. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Paddy, how would I tie those wings in? If I was going to tie the wings in, um, I would have tied the I would have tied the wings in first before I did anything else. So I would have put tied uh, my thread on, taking it about two thirds of the way down, and then tied in um, uh, my two wing ha my wing hackles um, pointing up. Um, and you, you tie them in down first of all, and then you cock them up with a few turns, then figure of eight turns, and then I worry about the rest of it. Um, I'll do another one. Uh, yeah, Anton. Yeah, March Browns, the next double hackle dries. Remember, we tied those the other week and we put a, a partridge hackle in as well. Um, always worth uh, uh, worth having a go at that. Um, and if anything, you know, they don't need a double hackle. Um, they don't need it. Right. Um, you know, you could just double, you could just uh, increase the number of the amount of turns of one particular color. You use what you've got, experiment. Um, uh, but hackles are definitely one of those things. If you're going to spend some money on some natural materials, buy good hackle. OK, buy good hackle. There are some deals to be had. Um, often you can pick things up second hand as well. Um, and you don't have to. Um, uh, buy a whole cape just for yourself. Um, I've got a number of friends that sometimes, you know, I, I might be looking for a particular particular uh, um, type of, uh, of cape and we club together and then we split it. We split the cape in half or thirds. So we've all got an equal amount and it's more than enough. <coughs> so there we go. Um, lots of uh, lots of uh, cool patterns for you to try. Um, I don't know about you. It's been a long week. I'm pretty tired. Um, having been on the water most of the day as well. Um, can't wait for uh, for those warm spring days and then those warmer summer days as well, where I can just be wearing a t-shirt um, rather than having to have multiple coats on and scarves. Okay, um, but I, um, that's all from me for tonight. The only thing left for me to say is thank you for those of you that entered the competition from last week um, uh, where I asked uh, you to submit pictures to me of the three flies from last week and your your versions of them. Um, I had quite a few in um, and and the, the, the winner of the uh, Semperfly pack of goodies from me um, is uh, is um, uh, Pete Flavin. So, Pete, if you're still watching um get in contact by a dm and i'll organize an address and i'll get those sent out to you over the weekend um and uh we'll have more competitions um later on in the next month or so right enjoy your weekend folks i'm going to go and have a glass of wine and watch a movie um and then be woken up exceptionally early by my children as i they always do on a weekend but never for never on a school day very strange see you later <laughs>